We're standing in the middle of the Minerals of New York State exhibit here in the New York State Museum in Albany, New York, surrounded by thousands of different minerals. Let's start off with the definition of a mineral. A mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic solid. Naturally occurring means that it occurs in nature. Inorganic means that it was never alive, nor is it made of anything that was ever alive. And, of course, it is a solid. The words mineral and rock are oftentimes used interchangeably. However, rocks and minerals are not the same. If you're confused about the use of the word mineral, or if you're having a difficult time determining the difference between a mineral and a rock, you're certainly not alone. Most rocks are made of minerals. Rocks can be composed of material that was once alive, and minerals cannot. Minerals have a distinctive chemical composition or crystal structure, and rocks do not. Now, as I look around, I notice that each of the minerals are identified with a tag. On these tags are their chemical makeup. On the chemical makeup, a lot of them, a surprising amount of them, have the minerals Si and O in them. That would be silicon and oxygen. That means if you see a mineral and its chemical makeup has silicon and oxygen in them, that means that it's part of the silicate family of minerals. And that makes up 90% of the minerals in the Earth's crust. The emphasis on the Regents' exam when it comes to minerals is on identification. In order to identify minerals, you need your reference tables. On page 16 of your reference tables, you will find that minerals are divided into metallic and non-metallic minerals. The minerals are further classified using their hardness range, their common colors, their characteristics and uses, and whether the mineral has cleavage or fracture. Also, each common mineral has its composition given. Here's an example of a Regents' exam question involving the mineral diagram in your reference tables. Name the mineral that has cleavage, contains calcium and fluorine, and can scratch calcite but not olivine. The choices are 1. Amphibole, 2. Quartz, 3. Fluorite, or 4. Pyroxene. Let's go through the answers and try to figure this one out. Choice one is amphibole. Amphibole does have cleavage. It does contain calcium, but it does not contain fluorine. Choice two is quartz. Quartz has a hardness of seven, which would scratch olivine. So that must not be the answer. Choice three is fluorite. Fluorite has a hardness of four, which is in between calcite and olivine. Fluoride also contains calcium and fluorine, and it has cleavage. Fluoride is probably your answer, but just to be sure, we should check answer four, which is pyroxene. Pyroxene has a hardness of 5,6. It has cleavage. However, it does not contain fluorine. So indeed, choice three, fluorite, should be your answer. Now, over here I have an example of a non-metallic mineral, and it's this green fluorite. It's glassy. It is non-metallic. Over here I have a sample of pyrite, and pyrite is a yellow brassy color, and it is termed metallic. Other metallic minerals can come in silver, or they could be also tarnished, which would give it a red-brown appearance. Besides being metallic or non-metallic, there are other methods of identification that we can use for minerals. Uh, first of these that I want to show you is the test for hardness. And to do this, you need a glass plate, and you take your mineral, and you rub it across the glass plate, and if it makes a scratch, that means that mineral is actually going to be harder than the glass slide, which would give it a hardness of between 5 and 6 on the Mohs hardness scale. One mineral property that is not very useful in identification is color. As you can see, one mineral can come in several different colors. The next thing I'd like to show you is the difference between cleavage and fracture. Cleavage means the mineral has flat sides, such as this calcite. Fracture would be like this pyrite. It has very rough edges. If I were to break pyrite, that pyrite would break and have very rough edges, all of the little pieces of pyrite. If I were to break this calcite, this calcite would have nice flat edges. 
A contributing factor to all these physical properties, including cleavage and fracture, is the internal arrangement of the atoms of these different minerals. Another distinguishing factor for minerals would be the test for the mineral streak. A streak is the color of the mineral's powder. And to test that, you need a streak plate. It's a white porcelain plate. You take your mineral, you rub it across the streak plate, and if it makes a streak, you take a look and you see what color it is, and you look it up on your reference tables. Another test you can do is a test for calcite. What you can do if you have a mineral and you think it's calcite, all you need is some dilute hydrochloric acid and a dropper, and you can drop a drop of hydrochloric acid on that calcite or on that mineral, and if it fizzes, you know you have calcite. Here's another way to use the acid test. I think what I'm sitting on is limestone. A way to figure out to see if this is limestone is to once again take out the hydrochloric acid. Put a drop or two or three and if it fizzes, it's limestone. We know that because limestone is made of calcite and as we've seen before, calcite reacts with acid by bubbling. Earth's crust and mantle consist almost entirely of minerals, yet the number of known minerals is less than 3,000. Minerals are studied not only for their useful properties, but for what their existence reveals about the history of the Earth.